There's nothing quite like the great British chip. And what could be simpler? After all, it's just a potato chopped and fried for a few minutes. Simple, isn't it? What could possibly go wrong with that? Well, it's a little bit more difficult than that because people are a bit fussy when it comes to their chips. You see, everybody knows exactly how they should really look and taste. Gloriously golden and crisp on the outside and fluffy in the middle. Well, today I'm going to show you how to make the very best chips just the way your customers like them every time. I'm going to take you through the whole process from seed to farm to plate, showing you how they start life and how to store, fry and serve. I'll also be showing you that however tempting it may be, cutting corners can cost you dearly in the end. And you'll be pleased to know I'll be showing you that following the McCain guidelines can mean more profit for you. McCain certainly know their spuds, but they don't just use any old potatoes. They get the perfect size and tasting potatoes because they have a real head start. You see, McCain are unique. They have their own seed potato growing business in Montrose, right in the heart of the prime Scottish potato growing area, providing seed to UK growers for their crops. McCain use five different varieties of potatoes for their chips, from early crop to late harvesters. Makes sense if you think about it because it's the only way that McCain can make sure they have the best quality and size potatoes for their chips all the year round. All McCain food service branded chips are made from 100% British potatoes and most are grown from McCain's own seeds by over 300 farmers across the UK. Some of them have been growing for McCain for over 40 years. That's almost three generations of farmers. McCain's team of agronomy experts work together with them out in the field, quite literally. These guys really know their stuff and give the farmers practical advice and technical support all year round. Believe it or not, every potato grown from McCain has a potato passport. That means they can trace them back to not only the farm they were grown, but sometimes even the exact field. Incredible. And it doesn't stop there. Once farmers hand over their precious crops, McCain keep a BDI on quality from washing and peeling right through to chipping and freezing. That's serious quality control from seed to farm to plate. And also you can profit from serving glorious British chips to your customers. Right, I've just had a delivery from McCain, so let's get started. Of course, the chips you serve are only going to be as good as your raw material. And when you use McCain, you know that you have the best possible start. But even with quality chips, you're still going to make sure that you handle them correctly so they stay in perfect condition. First priority, check they arrive in perfect nick. Then when you're happy, get them into the cold store as quickly as possible because with frozen and chilled products, changes in the storage temperature are a big enemy of quality. You need to check a good few cases. So we're looking for minus 18 degrees C for frozen chips. Get a thermometer like this and check the temperature. OK, I'm happy with the temperature, but what about the condition of the boxes? Check carefully for signs of water or drop damage. You might think that chips are fairly hardy, but they're actually quite sensitive little fellas, so always handle them with plenty of TLC. Now let me put that into perspective. Drop a case from chest height like this and you'll damage up to a third of your chips and lose over one in ten of your portions. If you serve larger portions, you could lose six a case. For smaller portions, wave goodbye to up to ten servings per case. Broken bits mean that you have to put more chips on your plate to get a decent looking plateful. Now, you don't have to be a mathematician to see how the losses can build. You're literally chucking your profit away. Obviously, temperatures for frozen and chilled products are going to be different, but even small variations outside the recommended temperature range will affect finished quality, so it's essential you follow the manufacturer's storage instructions. Right, I think that's about that. Remember, only sign for delivery when you're completely happy with everything. Right, time to get that thermometer out again. Now make sure that the temperature in the cold storage is minus 18 degrees C for frozen and zero to three degrees C for chilled. 
In the case of frozen chips, if the temperature was any higher, you might start to get the chips clumping together. This makes them harder to cook evenly and reduces the yield you get from each bag. And apart from anything else, it doesn't look very good on a plate, like this less than perfect plateful. Well organised storage can actually make the whole temperature issue a lot easier to manage. It's always a good idea to store the chips off the floor and away from the walls. So use good, clean shelving and make sure there's good all round ventilation. This is going to give you room for air to circulate, keeping the temperature nice and even. And of course, it lets you get in and around the cases for easy cleaning. Never stack more than five cases high. It makes everything easy to handle, but more importantly, it means the boxes won't topple over. Now when you're taking a case out of storage, always follow the FIFO rule. First in, first out. Check the date codes and take the oldest chips first. The basic principles apply for whatever chips you're using, but with freeze chilled chips, there are one or two different points to bear in mind if you're planning to cook from chilled. You need to remove your chips from your freezer and transfer to your chiller, storing for a maximum of five days using the oldest stock first. Now, whether you're cooking with freeze chilled chips from chilled or straightforward chilled chips, you need to take a little bit more care as they're more prone to breakages. If you've got the luxury of a walk-in freezer, you might find it more efficient to transfer what you need to a store nearer the fryer before cooking starts. Now they're safely tucked away, time to think about your cooking oil. You know the quality of your cooking oil can really make or break your chips, so it's vital that you keep it up to scratch. There are three big issues with the oil. How clean the oil is, how much of it there is, and how hot it is. So make sure you check all of these as part of your daily prep. Okay, so first thing, cleanliness. If your oil is old or dark like this, you're going to end up with bad chips. So change it frequently. To avoid waste, filter it regularly following the fryer manufacturer's instructions. It's also worth checking that the oil is free of any crumb too. Now a good way to clean it is to use a sieve like this and drag it along the oil. If you don't do this, you'll get nasty little black specks on your chips and it's not going to go down very well with your customers. Check your frying basket for damage. Broken wires are a food safety risk and you lose chips into the oil. Apart from reduced yield, blackened and burnt chips really affect flavour and appearance. And then there's your oil level. Keep it topped up to the right levels to ensure even cooking. Too little and your chips could be undercooked or even raw, and too much leads to splattering. But only top up when the fryer is switched off and the oil is totally cold. Check the fryer thermometer and make sure it's at the same temperature as the handheld thermometer. Too hot and your chips will cook too quickly and be dark on the outside and raw in the middle and too cold and too much oil will be absorbed meaning horrible soggy chips. Got that? Okay, time to start cooking. If you're using frozen chips, always cook them straight from frozen. If you let them thaw, you'll find it harder to get your timings right and you'll end up with inconsistent quality. Thanks, Emma. So, take your basket out of the oil and always fill with chips taken straight from the freezer. Now, whatever chips you're using, it's really important that you fill the basket to halfway and no higher. Let the oil circulate around the chips for nice, even cooking and no raw or overcooked chips. And then, set your timer and gently lower the chips into the oil. If you're using chilled chips, the timings are going to be different from frozen. But the secret to perfect chips every time is be consistent. If you overfry chips past their recommended cooking time, you may find they absorb more oil and therefore more fat. Give the basket a shake at regular intervals to ensure the chips stay separate from one another. Make sure that they're nice and evenly cooked all over. Keep the basket in the oil to keep the chips frying all the time. It's always a good idea to turn the fryer down when you're not using it. This helps the oil last longer, but if you do this, 
always make sure that it's back up to the right temperature before you fry another batch. And of course, always, always fry to order. This is the only way you can guarantee lovely, hot, perfectly cooked chips. If you double fry, known as blanching, you're going to end up with burnt tasting, empty, crispy chips with excessive oiliness. Plus, they're not going to hold as long. Worst of all, you're going to end up doing everything twice. Now, you may be blanching because you think it saves you time, but I've got to tell you, it's a false economy. Cooking small amounts regularly makes the most efficient use of your time. Well, they're cooking nicely, so let's use our time efficiently to prep the rest of our order. When the frying time is up, gently shake the chips and drain them over the fryer for a maximum of 10 seconds. Just long enough to get rid of the excess oil that can leave you with something a little bit limp and soggy. And then transfer them to the scuttle. What you're after is a chip that's crispy and golden on the outside, but light and fluffy on the inside. If you need to, put them under the heat lamps, but only for a maximum of five minutes. Keep them hanging around too long and they'll end up cold and soggy, and that's really going to eat into your profitability. Just to prove it, we held chips for 10 minutes in a scuttle and then compared them to pristine, freshly fried chips. On average, we got 17% less portions per case on the ones we held compared to the freshly fried ones. You see, the longer you hold chips, the soggier they become. And because they're not crisp, they don't stack up as high on the plate. So your yield will be lower because you need more chips to get the right plate coverage. And then you've got your hidden costs. If your chips are inconsistent, you'll get complaints which can really cost you in the long run. Every bad portion of chips undermines your reputation. If you're lucky, your customers will complain and you can do something about it. Otherwise, they just won't come back. Serve them or discard them. Bad chips really eat into profits. The best way you can avoid this is, again, always cook to order and only ever cook what you need. Right, time to serve these up. Always use a scoop for perfect portion control. You know, McCain here from Caterers that often portions are 50% bigger than standard, which again, can affect your profits. So check you're serving your company's standard portion size at team meetings. Consistency means value for money and happy diners who keep coming back. What do we mean when we talk about glorious chips? Well, McCain looked for three key things. Length, appearance, and consistency. Let's take length first of all. McCain specify the longest potatoes for their chips. Why? Well, it's simple. It benefits you, the caterer, because the longer the chip, the fewer you need for a really good looking portion. It's down to the way they're piled on the plate. Now look at these two portions. Now they might look identical, but there really is a big difference. The portion on the right uses less chips. Use fewer chips per portion and you get more portions per case, more profit for you. It's like the old saying, you only get out what you put in. Buy cheaper chips and you'll end up with fewer portions. Invest in quality, however, and you'll get more servings, better value for money, and a lot more profit in the long run. Yes, size does matter, but so does the way the chips look, and that brings me to appearance. Now, these chips have a few unattractive black bits and broken pieces, but these McCain chips look fantastic, and given that we all eat with our eyes, McCain chips win hands down. And finally, consistency. Everyone likes to be able to rely on the quality of what they're buying. We all like to know we're getting what we pay for. So when customers order your chips, they know they're getting their money's worth. Okay, so let's review the main points. Always check that the chips haven't defrosted if they're supposed to be frozen. Store your chips at minus 18 degrees C. Use clean shelving or pallets off the ground and away from the walls. And never stack more than five boxes high. 
Transfer to the kitchen one case at a time and pour straight from the bag into the frying basket when you get an order. Keep your oil at the temperature recommended by the manufacturers, no more, no less. And keep the oil clean, topped up and free from scraps and debris. Shake the chips while they fry to make sure they cook evenly all over. Shake off any excess oil and don't leave them to hold over the fryer. Put them under heat lamps but for no more than five minutes and always, always cook to order. And finally serve with a scoop to make sure that everyone gets their fair share of glorious, perfectly cooked chips. So there you have it. Perfect chips every time. Easy really.